Our sermonic text has already been lifted, and I'm going to ask you to bring your attention to the 28th and the 29th verse of Matthew, the 14th chapter. Matthew chapter 14, reading verses 28 and 29. And it reads thusly, Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. And beloved, for a little while, I want us to reflect on this thought, the price of staying in the boat. The price of staying in the boat. Beloved, let us pray once again, God, I'm calling upon your name behind this sacred desk, realizing that in this preaching moment that I'm totally dependent upon you. Lord, send your anointing, send your preaching power, because it's not by might nor by power, but by your spirit, says the Lord of hosts, creating me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. And I'll be so careful to praise your name. It's in Jesus' name that I do pray. And the people of God in agreement said amen. Beloved, the price of staying in the boat. Beloved, there is an old adage that says that if you want something different, then you need to do something different. Um, equally, there is an adage that says insanity uh, is doing the same thing over and over and over again, uh, but you are expecting uh, a different result. Uh, beloved, that's like driving uh, the same route uh, every day, uh, but expecting to reach uh, a different uh, destination. That's like usually going to uh, the store uh, and you buy a cake mix uh, and you expect for it to taste uh, like Big Mama's homemade uh, red velvet cake. Uh, that's like trying to lose 10 pounds uh, but you eat every hour, all the hour, 24 hours a day. Uh, that's like trusting God to bless us beyond measure but we are stingy with our time, our talent, and our time. Beloved of God, uh, I contend uh, that if we want something different, uh, then we need to do something different. Uh, and I just believe in my Holy Ghost imagination uh, that Peter uh, was tired of the routine, uh, that Peter uh, was tired uh, of the familiar, uh, and he wanted something different. Uh, and that brother said, I got to try something a little bit different different. Beloved, on this uh, last Sunday, uh, we introduced a series. Uh, if you want to walk on water, uh, you've got to get out of the boat. Uh, and it's based on a book uh, that's written by John Artberg. Uh, we learned on last Sunday uh, about the metaphorical boat. Uh, in other words, uh, the boat, uh, Brother Gene, uh, is where we are right now. Uh, but the Water represents the next step that we need to take in our spiritual development. And in order to get where we need to be, beloved, you got to get out of, come on, y'all, out of the boat. Beloved, recall, love, in 
our text. Uh, you know, our text is written by the apostle uh, Matthew. Uh, and it's three o'clock uh, in the morning. Uh, and the disciples uh, are caught, y'all, uh, in a storm uh, in the middle of the sea. Uh, don't you know uh, that the wind uh, is howling? Uh -huh. The waves uh, are fierce. Uh, the rubble, y'all, uh, got to be tossing uh, in their stomachs. Uh, got to be turning. Uh, in other words, uh, the disciples uh, are in distress. Uh, and all of a sudden, uh, they see a shadow. Uh, they see a ghost uh, walking uh, on the water. Uh, the disciples uh, thought they were seeing a ghost. Uh, but Jesus said, uh, take courage. Uh, it is I. Don't be afraid. And all of a sudden, Peter being Peter, that cocky Peter, Peter said, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come to you, not on dry land, but tell me to come to you on the water. You see, Peter, I believe, he had a choice to make. Yes, if Peter gets out of the boat, there is a good chance that Peter might sink. But if Peter didn't get out of the boat, he was guaranteed, y'all, never to walk on water. When you read the Bible, the Bible doesn't say how far Peter walked. <laughs> but one thing, beloved, we can't deny is that Peter actually, come on y'all, walked on water. That Peter made a conscious decision that he wanted to get his feet wet. Where am I going? My brothers and sisters, there are no guarantees in life. Just opportunities and just strong possibilities. You see, Peter, he didn't ask Jesus for a guarantee. He asked Jesus, y'all, Lord, just give me an opportunity. How can I say that? because I'm in the word of God. Peter said, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come to you on the water. In other words, Peter made a conscious decision to get his feet wet and he wasn't operating in foolishness. Remember I told you last week, he was operating in faith. Amen. You see, the author John Ottberg, he argues that God... Uh, he wants to do extraordinary things in our life. But before we get out of the boat, before we pursue that opportunity, we have to make sure that it's Jesus that is telling us, come on, y'all, to come. Oh, they don't get it. In other words, Peter wasn't acting on impulse. Come on, y'all. Like when you pull out that switchblade and cut off that soldier ear. Now Peter said, Lord, if it's you, let me check in with you. Because my sheep know my voice and I know them and they follow me. So if it's really, really the you, Jesus, then why don't you bid me to come? Peter, Peter decided uh, to trust Jesus. And as a result, Jesus propelled him into a new dimension of faith. I know uh -huh, that that's a supposition that I got to prove, uh, Judge Pam, but I believe I got biblical evidence on my side. Oh, Peter had the faith that propelled him to a new dimension, Brother Brock. You want me to prove it in the scripture? I'm talking about the kind of faith that when Peter preached his first sermon, 3,000 souls, come on y'all, were baptized. I'm talking about the kind of faith that allowed Peter to heal the crippled man from birth at the gate called beautiful, silver and gold. I do not have, but what I have I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Walk. And guess what? The brother, he got up and he woke. 
I'm talking about the kind of faith that allowed Peter to raise Dorcas from the dead. I'm talking about the kind of faith that dumbfounded the Sadducees who openly talked about Peter, said Peter was unschooled, said Peter was ordinary, yet everybody in Jerusalem knew about all the miracles that Peter was showing. I'm talking about the kind of faith in which Jesus declared that thou art Peter and upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Peter, 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 that Peter, he decided, beloved, to, to get his feet wet. And once he decided to step out on his faith, don't you know his life was changed? And it was changed forever. Beloved, when you decide, when you decide uh, to get your feet wet, do you hear Jesus saying, take courage, it is I, don't uh, be afraid. Uh, do you hear uh, Jesus saying, come, uh, or are you going to stay uh, in the boat uh, like the other 11 disciples? Uh, in other words, are you going to stay uh, in your spiritual uh, comfort zone? Uh, we talk about your spiritual comfort zone uh, on last week. Uh, your comfort zone uh, is where you feel safe. Uh, your comfort zone uh, is where you feel at ease. Your comfort zone uh, is stress free. Uh, the 11 disciples uh, stayed uh, in the boat. Uh, but I'm here to tell you this morning uh, that you're going to pay a price uh, to stay in the boat. Now see, I'm not trying to throw shade uh, on the disciples uh, who stayed uh, in the boat. Because see, there are always uh, going to be some folk uh, who are content uh, with just drifting uh, through life. Uh -huh. There's going to be some folk uh, who just want to drift uh -huh, and sail. Come on, y'all. Uh, on the water uh, is always going to be some folk uh, who are going to stay on the path uh, of least uh, resistance. Uh, however, it can be said uh, that the disciples who stayed in the boat did not want to risk brokenness or failure. Mm, Y'all looking at me? Come on, Jesus. Help me up in here. Perhaps y'all, uh, the 11 disciples, they did not want to risk uh, being ridiculed. Y'all know we know how to talk of our folk and make them feel bad. Perhaps the 11 disciples, uh, they treasured safety uh, over success. Perhaps the 11 disciples, uh, they had been beaten up uh, by the storms of life uh, so much uh, until it was less risky uh, to stay uh, in the boat uh, because the Bible said uh, that the water was rough, uh, the waves were high, and the wind was strong. Perhaps the disciples were content just watching Peter from the sidelines. After all, Peter stepped from the boat and that brother consciously entered into the storm while the other folk hid from the storm. Oh, you need to get there. Uh-huh, the wind and the wave. Uh, it was storming out there. But Peter said, I'm going to step out on faith. Uh, even if I got to step. Uh, yeah, you get it when you get home. When you get home. When you get home. Perhaps uh, it was way too early in ministry for the 11 disciples to trust Jesus. Uh, to trust their pastor like that. Uh, they needed some more time and experience under their belt. Uh, perhaps the disciples had actually calculated the and it costs too much, y'all, to get up out of the boat. Perhaps.
themselves. They were very much aware of the pain of potential failure, embarrassment, inadequacy, criticism, and perhaps even the loss of life. But what the disciples were not aware of is that there was another price to pay. The price of staying in the boat. Can I press my claim? You see, my brothers and my sisters, the price of staying in the boat is the risk of dreams not coming true. The price of staying in the boat uh, is procrastination putting off tomorrow uh, what you can do today minutes uh, become hours and hours uh, become days uh, and days uh, become weeks uh, and weeks uh, become months uh, and months uh, become years and soon you realize that you're still in the same boat and you're going nowhere fast I'm just talking about the price of staying in the boat. It's like living your life in a scrapbook. Uh, you just look at pictures uh, and you just daydream and you just think about uh, what could have been uh, unrealized potential. Uh, you see, the price uh, of staying in the boat uh, is not being uh, where Jesus is. Ooh, they miss it. Oh, because Jesus uh, is on the water, Sister Sarah. Uh-huh. He's not even in the boat. You see, Jesus was on the water, and Peter walked on the water in order to get down where Jesus was. Maybe the true cause of staying in the boat, beloved, is not growing in our faith because the Bible teaches us without faith it is impossible, come on y'all, to please God. Beloved, in this Christian journey, we have to come to the fundamental understanding that if I'm going to experience a, a greater measure of God's power working in my life, in my family, in my church, in my ministry, in my career, it will only begin by me acting in faith and trusting God enough to take the next step of obedience that he's calling me to do. Beloved, we can read about God's awesome power. His awesome power in the Bible. Healing the sick. Making the lame to walk. The deaf to talk. We can listen to how God has blessed and delivered and restored other folk uh, and how multiplying two fish and five loaves of bread uh, fed the multitude. Uh, we have witnessed uh, how God has brought other folk uh, to the other side of through. Uh, yes, uh, beloved, uh, where am I going? Uh, I know that this is uh, the information age, uh, but simply uh, having information about Jesus us about God's power is not enough because if you are going to grow in your faith if you're going to accomplish the extraordinary then we have to learn how to trust the voice of Jesus because the price of staying in the boat is too high if you want to walk on water you better get willing to get your feet wet. <laughs> if uh, you want to walk on the water, uh, you have to be willing to get your feet wet. Uh, you got to be willing to get your feet wet. Uh, and there are times in your life uh, where I know uh, that the world uh, can overtake you. But baby, just get your big toe wet. Amen. Don't be so succumb. Uh, that you're really not willing to step out on faith. 
Jesus. Can you trust God to take care of you? If you say yes, then you got to get your feet wet first. Now, I know that there are some that may use the excuse of fear for not getting their feet wet. But if the truth be told, they're afraid that if I risk obeying God, that he will not take care of me. That if I decide to trust God, then I will not be all right and something will happen that I cannot help. Or they simply may feel that they don't have enough faith. But can I get your attention? If you don't, if you don't pay nothing else attention, I say I need for you to hear this, uh, hear this, hear this. Uh, but it's not the size of your faith. It's what you do with your faith. Oh, I hope, I hope they caught that. Amen. That, that is not the size of your faith. Uh, uh, it's what you do with your faith. I need some Bible behind that. You see, Jesus told a parable about a mustard seed. He said the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and he planted it in his field. Though it is the smallest of all your seeds, yet when it grows, it is the largest of garden plants and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and perch in its branches. Oh, they, they don't have it yet. You see, the parable of the mustard seed suggests the rapid growth of the kingdom of God. In essence, from a small beginning, from a very tiny seed, y'all, that God can bless the tiny seed, and it's God that will provide the increase. Therefore, beloved, instead of asking God for more faith, just try to get to know God a little bit better. Yes. Yes. Ooh, I think that went over the head. We pray for more faith all the time. But what we need to know uh, is, Lord, uh, I just get to know you uh, a little bit better. Because when you know God uh, just a little bit better, uh, you can trust him uh, to do some things that you know uh, that you cannot do. Uh, but you got to get to know him uh, just uh, a little bit better. Because uh, every day uh, with Jesus uh, is sweeter than the day. Come on, y'all, before. Every day with Jesus, I love him more and more. Jesus saves and keeps me, and he's the one I'm waiting for. Because every day with Jesus, what am I trying to say? We just need to know Jesus just a little bit better. It's not about trying to have more faith. It's about getting to know our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And when we understand how omnipotent he is, that he has our power. When we understand how omniscient he is, that he's all knowing. When we understand how omnipresent he is, that he can do it for you and do it for me at the same time. Once we experience those dimensions of Jesus, it's not a matter about having more faith. Because I trust him to do what I can't do. So how much faith do I need? Just enough faith to get my feet wet. Hey, hey. how much, y'all, faith do I need? Just enough faith to get my big toe wet. I'm going somewhere. How much faith do I need? Just enough faith to get out of the boat and to get out of my spirit. Your comfort zone. Yes. Just enough faith. Because yes, without it, it's impossible. 
So how much faith do I need? The faith the size, come on y'all, of a mustard seed. Let me bring this home. In his book, John Altberg, he, he gives this following illustration. He says, and I'm quoting, he says, I want you to exercise your imagination for a moment. Imagine that your life is over and you're led to a small room. There are two chairs in the room, one for you and one for God, who gets a very large chair. And beloved, there's a DVD player. God plays a, a DVD that has your name on it. And the DVD is labeled what might have been. Ha! Imagine watching all that God might have done with your life if you had let him. Imagine seeing what God might have done with your financial resources if you had trusted him to tithe. Imagine seeing what God might have done with your giftedness if you had trusted him enough to be bearing. Imagine what God may have done in your relationships if you had trusted him enough to be fully truthful and fully loving. Imagine what God might have done with your character if you had dared to confess sins, acknowledge temptation, and pursue growth. End of quote. Beloved, there's a price to staying in the boat. Even in this illustration, beloved, there's some good news. And what's the good news? It's not too late. If you want something different, then you what? Do something different. You're not too old and you're not too young. As long as you have breath in your body, that means that God has given you another chance, another opportunity, because the price is way too high to stay in the boat. Yes, the odds, they may be stacked against you, but the price is too high to stay in the boat. The issues, they seem unchangeable, but the price is too high to stay in the boat. You have more bills than income, but the price is too high to stay in the boat. Your joy is gone. Your passion is gone. Your drive is gone. And you feel, what's the use? But the price is too high to stay in the boat. You've been lied on. You've been criticized. You had to wipe tears from your eyes. But the price is too high to stay in the boat. God is doing a great work, but you are going to continue ministry as usual, but the price is too high to stay in the boat. Ask yourself the question, are you part of the 11 disciples that stayed in the boat? Are you ready to trust Jesus and walk on water? Because the price is too high to stay in the boat. Why? Because Jesus paid it all. And all to him I owe. That sin had left a crimson stain, but he washed it. White as snow. The price is too high to stay in the boat. 
whenever Jesus says come, he says come. Because the price is too high. The price is way too high. The price is an absorbing amount to stay in the boat. It's time to get out of the boat. And I don't know what your boat is. Where you feel so safe. And you feel so comfortable. That you can't trust Jesus to do a new thing. In your life. What is your boat? Is your boat your age? Saying you've been there, done that. Thinking that it's over. No. What is your boat? Mm. Is your sickness your boat? You like all the attention that you're getting because you have a chronic illness and people are paying you attention. So that has become, oh, did I do that? Your boat. Therefore, you're not going to trust Jesus to make your home so you can run this race just a little bit long. Beloved, what is your boat? Mm. Because you don't want to study too hard to get that next promotion on your job. You want to burn the midnight oil at 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning right now so that you can advance your career, not realizing that that's a short-term investment for long-term benefits. What is your boat? What is it? Your spouse been called home to glory. And you don't want to believe the Lord that he can bless you with another love like that. Yeah, I'm busy all the day, brother Brown. Yes, that's your boat. What's your boat? What's your boat? I don't know what your boat is. But I know one thing. Jesus is saying, come. Maybe the world is your boat. Mm -hmm. You've allowed Satan to do a number on you. Thinking you don't have to give your life to Christ. That it does not take all of that. But beloved, you need to give your life to Christ today. That young lady did not go to that party thinking she was going to be shot in her hand. And I'm not one of them hellfire brimstone kind of preachers. But what I do know, if you're not in the ark of safety, if you never confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and ask him to forgive you for your sins, don't take this opportunity lightly. Beloved, he died so that you could have an abundant life. He died so that you could have life eternal. And if you don't have the gift of salvation, beloved, this appeal is for you.